Baseball News Club presents episode 14. Actually, this was for December, but December we got busy and I didn't do anything. So I owe you two this month. This is December's episode, and then episode number 15 will be at the end of January. My name is Chris. Let's go ahead and get started. There's a lot to go over. Hall of Fame for agencies. Let's get started. Please follow, subscribe, like, and comment on the video. Okay, first thing on the list is Yasiel Puig. If you've been following our vlogs and following the news, um, you know about how he didn't play in 2020. He got Corona. And, and right now he's playing in the Dominican uh, Winter Ball. Now what's interesting about Puig is right now he has the court case against him. It was filed on December 4th. It's about assault, libel, and slander. It's about the girl talking about her interactions with him in a club, how he went into the restroom and she's claiming assault. Um, so that's where that stands right now. That's still pending. Now, the best I can see that this is not a criminal case and no criminal charges going against Puig. But how does that affect his uh, free agency? Now, if I was coming to you and I said, I got it written down. Okay, if I'm an agent and you're an owner and I come to you and I said, hey, I got a player who has a career 277 average. He's going to give you 20, 30 home runs, 80 to 90 runs. He's in his prime. Um, you know, what would you think? You'd probably be like, yeah, this is a player I'm interested in. Um, you'd be like, yeah, this is a player I'm probably interested in. Well, we're talking about Yasiel Puig. So once you present that name, the owners might change gears and they might switch how they feel. Which is unfortunate because I think he's in his prime. He's been working out in offseason. He signed with Luba Sports. I think this is a crossroads in his life. I think what Puig needs to do, and this is my theory, he needs to sign a one-year contract. I think he should get 8 to $15 million. And here's the reason why. Because of his past and how he hasn't put up numbers, and right now he's in the Dominican League just batting 231. It's only 20 at-bats, but still, he's got to light it up to show the owners that he's really you know, worth the money. But what I think he should do is sign a one-year contract put up a 300 average, blow it up this year, you know, because Major League Baseball is talking about 162 game schedule, blow it up. Then next year when you become a free agency, go for a five-year contract worth a ton of money because right now I think if he signs a long-term three to five-year contract with the team, they're going to lowball him because the way free agency is going right now, I just think it's a bad idea for him. So again, let me know in the comments what you feel about Puig. I think he's going to get signed, but I think he should just go for a one-year contract and put up big numbers this year so he can sign that nice contract um, next year. Now moving on to the next thing is if you follow us on Instagram, we are moving into our second phase with Baseball News Club. That is all baseball. So right now going on, if you need your baseball fix, you got the Australian Baseball League and then you got the Dominican League, which Fernando Tatis, Robinson Cano are playing in. Now you can get the ABL. I'm including the leaks in the description below. Um, ABL you can get free on YouTube. It's kind of like a triple A, a little bit higher, and there's actually a lot of major league and college players and minor league players playing in the ABL this year because there's, you know, the way minor leagues are, they need to get some playing time. And then the Dominican, that's kind of like a major league, triple A, you know, you got some really solid players. I mean, look at Tatis is playing on the team, so it's a little, it's like a level up from Australian, but you have two options right now to watch these sports. Okay, what's the next subject? Okay, next subject on the batting lineup is the New York Yankees letter. This is the letter that the Yankees uh, have suppressed or is being suppressed when Rob Manfred wrote a letter to Brian Cashman years ago about their cheating uh, during the games. And you're going to have to you know, go to a search engine to study it. But the letter is currently being appealed by the Yankees. They don't want it released. It will be damaging because it's going to show proof that the Yankees cheated more than what they're claiming. Uh, DraftKings, there's a lawsuit against uh, Major League Baseball and, and some other affiliates regarding this. So that's a big thing right now. And I've reached out to a columnist or a baseball writer who wrote an article about it asking for an update. I cannot find an update on when this appeal is going to be in court or when the next step is. So I'm trying to find that out for you guys. And I'll let you know right away. All right. Next on the batting lineup is podcast. I actually did a survey on my Instagram. 100% of you said yes, do podcasts which will ultimately look like this. It will look like this on you know, Apple or iTunes or wherever I post it. So I'm going over right now studying which host I want to use, and then we're going to be doing podcasts. So there will be like an hour or two podcasts just talking nothing about baseball. So that is in the works. It's something you guys wanted. It's something I've been planning to do. It's just been you know, part of the process of growing uh, Baseball News Club. So look forward to that soon. It's going to happen in 2021. I'm hoping the next month or two. 
who we are. Um, I haven't, don't really talk a lot about myself because I want it to be baseball focused, but what we are is a baseball softball focus. So if it's college softball, college baseball, if it's Little League, Little League World Series, if it's wiffle ball, over the line, which is OTL, Major League Baseball, you know, minor league, we're covering everything. We're specifically only baseball, softball, baseball, you know, news club. So we're expanding now. This was part of our phase. This is phase two. This is part of our plan. We want to move ahead with this earlier this year, but just the way things were this year, I couldn't move ahead with everything. So that's who we are, who I am. Uh, baseball has been my life. I'm 50. The way I can explain it is I'm last of five. Everyone in my family has played baseball and softball. So my dad played in the military. All my older brothers and my sister played. In fact, my sister is older than me, and she she still plays uh, competitive softball. Same with my brother. I myself played everything you can think of from rec leagues, hardball, wooden bat, aluminum bat, co-ed, men's softball. Played everything. In fact, I've played into my 40s uh, hardball league, so I still enjoy baseball. I just don't like waking up at 7 a.m. on Sundays to go travel across town to play baseball. So, yes, I've become lazy in my old age. I still love to play. I can still competitively play. It's just I love everything about baseball. And as I go on and as you follow us on Baseball News Club, you'll see how crazy I am with baseball. My whole life has been everything baseball. In fact, when my sisters and brothers were playing Little League, I was a little kid running around in dugouts, running around the field, playing in the dirt. So that's where I started from. And then the rest of my life has been nothing but baseball. Uh, born and raised San Diego, so the Padres are my team. But I, I'm impartial. When you look at all my content, I don't make it obvious who I like because I don't think that's fair to pick on just, you know, to just go with my favorite team. But I have to review everybody's teams and be on everybody's side, if that makes sense. So that's who we are. You'll learn more about me. And, you know, I played shortstop. I played outfield. I wasn't really a pitcher. Mark. I couldn't throw over 75 miles per hour. Um, but that's a little bit about me. So let's move on to the next subject. All right, next subject. I kind of touched on this earlier. Uh, we are in the next phase. So what you're going to see a lot on our content is Little League, World Series, softball, NCAA baseball, softball, OTL, wiffle ball. We're going into expansion or into our second phase so you're going to see a lot more of that content coming out on youtube and on instagram i prefer you to join instagram versus twitter because instagram has the stories i'm on instagram all day long every day putting up news and the stories letting you guys know what's going on so i know if some of you out there don't like instagram i encourage you go to instagram this is where we're at Okay, next thing on the lineup is number seven in the lineup is Hall of Fame. The Baseball Hall of Fame baseball writers voted on December 31st, so it's in who's getting in the Hall of Fame in 2021. Now, last year we had Larry Walker, Derek Cheater. Derek Cheater is definitely a Hall of Famer. Larry Walker, you know, when you look at his analytics, he is a Hall of Famer. He didn't put up great Hall of Fame numbers, but in regards to like 3,000 hits, 500 home runs, but when you look at his analytics, he was a pretty amazing player, even in Colorado. I'm on the fence either or with him getting in, but, you know, he's a good baller. So this year, who we have on the fence is we got guys like Kurt Schilling, Roger Clemens, Barry Bonds. So this year's a little weirder. And, you know, honestly, with the Baseball Hall of Fame, it's become really kind of, uh, I wrote it down. I heard an analysis, and I totally disagree with him. He said, oh, it's a crowded ballot, so that's why players aren't getting in. No, there's the ballot right now. I mean, honestly, a lot of these players – don't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. When I think of a Hall of Famer, I think of Tony Gwynn, Mike Schmidt, you know, like a Ernie Banks and Mickey Mantle, uh, even modern day when you look at pitchers like Greg Maddox, Tom Glavin. Those are Hall of Famers to me. Ricky Henderson, when I look at their numbers and their body work over their career, that's a Hall of Famer. But nowadays, we don't have that. When you look at Manny Ramirez, he got in trouble for cheating. Todd Hilton's a good baller. Surprised his numbers weren't higher. Uh, Scott Rowland's not a Hall of Famer. Omar Vizquel's not a Hall of Famer, especially with his recent things but on the field yes he did some good things but my issue is is Kurt Schilling I just he's an example of a player that is not a Hall of Famer but right on the cusp like he put up good numbers but then when you look at the two guys below him we look at Bonds and Clemens you're going dude when you compare Schilling to them he doesn't hold a candle to them but you know the PED era with steroids that's what's taining Clemens and Bonds 
And it's it's unfortunate because Clemens, when you look at his career, the dude was a monster all the way through his career. His problem was is doing PEDs when he hit 40 so he can win the Cy Young 40 plus and put up great numbers. You know, as he got older, like Bonds, they reached out to PEDs. But to me, honestly, who should get in this year is Barry Bonds. I know it's going to shock a lot of you. Reason why, the dude was a Hall of Famer before he started taking PEDs. The dude put up monster numbers his whole career. He was a con consistent amazing ball player so if anyone's going to get be the exception it's going to be him but i just think the hall of fame right now is just a mess we're it's sometimes seems like it's a popularity thing and people are getting in in my opinion that don't deserve to get in when you look at the history of hall of famers and what they've done in their body of work and you look at the players that are getting in nowadays it doesn't add up but you know it should be left up to the fans honestly if the fans are happy with these guys getting in i'm good with that uh, but you know, it's a, it's a hard pill to swallow when you look at guys like, I'm sorry, Edgar Martinez is not a hall of famer. In my opinion, I'm not a big fan of players that have designated hitter experience because that's not an all around ball player. When you look at past hall of famers, like Ernie Banks, you know, Mike Schmidt, you look at all these great hall of famers. They didn't get in because of hall of fame. They got in through their whole body of work. So I think Edgar Martinez spent 65, 70% of his career as a DH. I don't know if that's a Hall of Famer, but the fans love him, so I'm okay with it. If the fans are okay with it, but at the same time, what are we doing to the Hall of Fame? Are we watering down the Hall of Fame to where now anybody gets in just because of analytics or anybody gets in because, you know, they're popular? So I don't know. It's kind of, I'm kind of on the fence with a lot of these guys this year. I don't know who's getting in. I have a feeling it might be an empty Hall of Fame, but then you might just squeeze in Kurt Schilling for for whatever reason. Major League Baseball, they are going with a full 162. That's their announcement in December. They're going to start spring training uh, end of February. They're going to go the whole, full 162. Now, everything, of course, is based upon COVID and the vaccines, and it's impacted everything from NCAA, softball, baseball, Little League. It's impacted everybody. I think all those are coming back this year. The question is, is how many games are we going to get? We're definitely getting 60 plus. Major League Baseball is aiming for 162, but it depends how these vaccines are rolling out, how the numbers, if we're continuing to climb with COVID, is it going to start going down? So I think Major League Baseball is hoping we'll go 162. I'm hoping we're going to get 120-ish. We're going to get over 100 games. I'm That's what I'm... Okay, I'm guaranteeing we're getting over 100 games. I'm calling it right now. But... We'll have to wait and see. Now, what's interesting, this is impacting the next thing I'm going to talk about is, well, actually, before I get to that, everything follows Major League Baseball. So college baseball, college softball, Little League, all that stuff is going to follow. So Major League Baseball can push for 162. We're going to see all these other sports come back. And I have a good feeling that we're going to see college baseball this year and college softball. I just hope and everything turns for us in 2021 and we can get all these sports back on track so we can all enjoy these sports with our family with our children and everything so this leads me into my next subject and number nine is free agency the major league schedule free agency they're all in one and you've seen it free agencies in 2019 we saw strasburg we saw chapman we saw uh all these big players um get signed in november and december only thing we've seen so far is josh bell and then the Padres massacre. <laughs> I mean, that day I woke up when I found out about Blake Snell, and then it, the hits just kept coming. You're like, you Darvish, and then it came, you know, and it was just crazy. But that's been like the biggest splash in the offseason. And by now, we've had a ton of signed players. So this makes you wonder about Trevor Bauer. I don't think there's a, a lot of money out there, or there is a lot of money because these owners are billionaires, but the thing is they're just... They're really worried about COVID. They lost a lot of money in 2020, all the owners and all the clubs. So I think they're just waiting to see how 2021 is rolling out, the vaccines. I think in January, in the next 30 to 45 days into mid-February, we're going to see a ton of signings. We're going to see DJ. We're going to see um, Trevor. But what hurts Trevor is the current status of Major League Baseball. They're not signing people. And Trevor's asking for big money like Garrett Cole and it's just, I think he's going to get a good payday. He's going to get a multi-year contract. I just, it's making you wonder when. 
Uh, and for Trevor, I think he's got to go to a market that's going to fit his lifestyle. He's actually a YouTuber also. So when you go to YouTube, he's pushing YouTube. He's got 130,000 subscribers. So I think that pretty much qualifies him for a YouTuber. But, you know, he is someone who brings that to a team. So when you sign him as an owner, you're got to be like, hey, this guy's bringing us fans just by the fact that he's a YouTuber. He's bringing us fans just by the fact of how he operates when he's not on the mound. So that's the draw to a lot of teams for Trevor is he brings that. So he's going to go to a big media market. I think he's, he's not going to go to a small media market. So unfortunately, small teams out there, if you got a lot of money, I don't see Trevor going to you. I see big media markets like Los Angeles, you know, New York, and Boston. So he's going to be going to those places, maybe even Toronto. I don't know. But to get back to free agency, we're going to see a lot in the next 30 to 45 days. Today's January 4th. We're going to see a lot of players get signed but again i think all the owners are just kind of holding their cards to their chest they're waiting to see what kind of pans out for next season and how it rolls out with coronavirus and hopefully with these vaccines this will bring everything back to normal and we'll start seeing these guys get signed but it's been a really slow off season it's been very frustrating but i think we're going to be fine um again watch the next 30 to 45 days you're going to see a slew of signings because it's got to be done before spring training um, so we'll have to wait and see. So thank you for watching Baseball News Club. Have a great day.